This is what I wish every ad school would teach you on the first day. Welcome to the Next Wave Ad School. It's free, it's for you, and it will only work with you. So if you like what you're about to watch, please subscribe, like, share, and get involved. You aren't here to make advertising. You're here to make people lust for your product or service. And you need them to trust you while they're falling in love. You're here to grease the wheels of industry, to change opinions, to make people think different. It doesn't matter if you are selling soap, tomato sauce, or orange juice. This isn't about you. It's not about making an ad, or redesigning a package, or telling a story. It's about making people want to buy something, a business transaction, or a conscious choice of A over B. So if you're in ad school, design school, learning about marketing, public relations, or web design, or film school, the first thing you better understand is the art of selling. Brad, show them how it's done. Boom. Sell me that pen. Watch. Go on. Let me show this fucking pen. That's my boy right there. This pen. Fucking right. sell anything. Why'd you do me a favor? Why'd you name down that napkin for me? I don't have a pen. Exactly. Supply and demand, my friend. See what I'm saying? Shit. He's creating urgency. Oh I started out selling stereo equipment when I was 12 years old. I was 24 before somebody explained to me that I really wasn't selling stereo equipment at all. I spent 12 years in the business selling the wrong thing, but so had most others. I'm here today to make sure you don't sell the wrong thing for the first 12 years of your business career. And don't worry, if I don't finish this story in this episode, we'll circle back around to it in future episodes. First, let's talk about selling soap. Soap is something every one of you uses every day. It's not something most of you think a whole lot about. It sits next to every sink, in every shower, in every kind of form. Bar soap, foam soap, pump soap, body wash. We use a lot of it. And that's why Procter & Gamble grew to be one of the world's largest companies, and one that spent a mountain of money on advertising. They spent so much money that they even created a whole genre of television shows. The soap opera, a story that never ends. A continuous drama that sucks viewers in for a daily look at the lives of others while getting sold. You guessed it, soap. They are a consumer products company and they are struggling now with the new age of digital media with its amazing ability to micro-target. They want to macro-blast their message. And those forms of advertising are becoming either harder to come by or incredibly expensive. Think Super Bowl ads, which are a once a year opportunity these are the people that invented a whole genre of daily TV shows. So why would they be willing to settle for a one-day opportunity? Your job, your livelihood, could be to work for a company like P&G that isn't interested in reaching people just once with a super incredible ad. They want to build relationships, meaningful relationships, with people that make them feel good about the way they smell, the way they feel about themselves, and buy more soap. There are two campaigns that sell soap that are the kind of ads you wish you were the one who created them. These are the gold standard. They are the ads that were not only watched, shared, watched again, remembered, talked about. They did the thing that they were supposed to do. Dove is not a Procter & Gamble brand. It's their arch enemy, Unilever. For every brand PNG has, Unilever is out there fighting for market share. PNG has Ivory and Unilever has Dove. PNG has Tide. Unilever has surf. In this war, who came first isn't necessarily important, but building brand loyalty is. It's no accident that the two big names in laundry are so close together. To understand selling soap, you need to understand who buys it, where they buy it, how often they buy it, and how they make that decision on what makes it off a store shelf and into a shopping cart. You actually have to hit the decision makers at multiple times in different ways to bring everything into focus as they walk past the display of soap on a store shelf. And what's going to make things even more difficult is when people decide they can't be bothered anymore to go to a store. How they pick which soap from their phone for inclusion in their next order. It's really hard to smell the difference between Dove and Ivory on a phone. Dove hit a home run with their Real Beauty campaign, showcasing the extent advertisers, that's you folks watching this, will go to create an image of unobtainable beauty that you will get if you use their product. It was an anti-ad, and it went viral in a huge way. People were talking about it. People were emulating it. 
creating a wave of people thinking that Unilever cared about people who didn't look like supermodels. People like me. People like just a few of you. Everyone in advertising is beautiful. Dress impeccably, just like in Mad Men. The campaign won awards, and it bumped sales. You, as a student of the craft of advertising, should be reading case studies and about effective campaigns from day one of your journey from neophyte to ad god. Real Beauty was a beauty of a campaign because it was based on what we call a universal truth. Something so basic, so fundamental, so critical to understand the human condition, and then building up on that because they started with research that uncovered a fact. A huge research study in 10 countries uncovered this. Only about 2% of the women interviewed thought of themselves as beautiful. Many of the customers that bought their products felt that traditional beauty advertising made them feel a bit demoralized and a bit miserable. It makes you feel deflated when you see the gap between these images of perfection and your own physical reality. That's a stunning discovery. Your ads are actually making consumers feel inadequate. My friends, that is why advertising shouldn't be left to amateurs and dilettantes. It's why you're here, ready to learn what you need to know about how to make advertising that doesn't actually hurt your company or your product. Sort of like Google with their mantra, don't be evil. Advertising is a force for good when used well. It helps make people make good choices on where and what they spend their money on. It helps people decide what to do, where to go, and even who to vote for, although that's a whole other discussion for another time in a future episode. Every brand manager, that's a fancy name for a client, a person who will have you sweating bullets trying to keep happy for the rest of your life in advertising, will dream of having a campaign like Real Beauty because it went viral. Viral means they didn't have to pay for consumers to watch it, and that is considered the gold standard. When we interview potential hires at the next wave, we always ask them to name three of their favorite commercials. If you're a video producer, three of your favorite movies. We, of course, have our favorite three, and it changes daily. But one ad that shows up a lot is one done by Wyden and Kennedy for Procter & Gamble for a body wash. The man your man could smell like was an instant success. The final tagline, smell like a man, man, was lost. But I'm on a horse became a de facto statement to stop a conversation. With one ad, w &K deftly repositioned a brand previously known as your daddy's aftershave as the scent for ladies who want their men to smell like a man. As a side note, because, well, there's nothing original in advertising, that tagline reminds us of an earlier campaign by Crispin Porter and Pogusky for Burger King, where the payoff was, eat like a man, man. As my first boss in this business once told me, you will make original things out of a collection, a library you build of other pieces and parts. The longer you are in this business, the bigger your library will be. Thank you, Larry Holland. And man, you would have been in love with Pinterest. Viral ads are few and far between. They are unicorns. You create one and you'll be able to punch your own ticket. You create a bunch and you may be the creative director of the decade. An award that's only been given out once and to one person. You, as a young future star of advertising, should know who I'm talking about. That is, if you want to be taken seriously in your professional career. It's one of my pet peeves of kids coming through my door looking for a job. If you were a basketball player trying to make it in the NBA and you didn't know who Michael Jordan or LeBron James was, you'd be laughed out the door. So if you didn't know I was talking about Alex Pogusky of Crispin Porter and Pogusky, that's another part of your education. You should know about how his firm went from being a small regional shop out of Miami to becoming the hottest shop in the world. It all started with a government-sponsored public health campaign to stop kids from smoking. That campaign got a name and an attitude when they took it and called it truth. People took notice. Next thing you know, other clients were beating down their doors. Bigger clients, troubled clients, challenging clients, and the hits kept coming from the agency as it grew. They started out with a creepy king campaign for Burger King client and notoriously switched agencies almost every 18 months. The Creepy King campaign was immediately noticed by the people CP and P had identified as the largest consumers of fast food, meatheads. Males, 18 to 24, who eat fast food at least four to five times a week. Burger King actually wrote it out with CP and B for a whopping seven years. Subservient chicken, Whopper freakout, a video game, a cologne that smells like burgers, were all part of a series of ads and promotions that made Burger King 
not just the McDonald's wannabe. They launched the Mini brand in the USA for BMW and then resigned it to take on Volkswagen, which had a history of changing the course of advertising with ads like Think Small and Lemon in the early 60s, only to grow into one of the world's largest car companies who had lost their mojo. But Gusky and his team brought it back. From 2000 to 2010, this agency made ads that made people think. It's your job as an ad person to know about these campaigns and how they worked, to be able to discuss them intelligently, to know what the secret sauce was in creating them. In our next class, we'll remind you of how serious advertising is, where a Super Bowl campaign gone bad put the client six feet under, where brilliant branding made a tomato sauce a star, and how a very expensive redesign of packaging cost a corporate giant 20% of sales almost overnight, and maybe even throw in a little politics as well. If you like what you've just learned, we only ask two things, subscribe and share. Go out and create lust, evoke trust, and make your clients a lot more money than they pay you.